Hey guys, and welcome back to Trains with Shane, and we've got another Will It Run episode. Today's guest is a little something I picked up off of eBay, I think. It's one of those, I bid on it, and if I could get it for cheap enough, good. Um, so I bid, and I did, and what we've got here is a Paragon 3 uh, Rolling Thunder DCC and Sound from everyone's favorite controversial um, manufacturer, Broadway Limited. Um, these guys should need no introduction. You either love them or you absolutely hate them. Um, some people have had nothing but bad luck with their decoders, and some people have never had a problem like myself. So far, fingers crossed. So, specifically, We've got an SD40-2, my favorite road engine of all time. Looks like this is packed in here kind of upside down. In Chessie colors, B and O. Looks like we might need to do a little bit of reattachment there. Let me get you guys zoomed in on the sunshade. No big deal. So let's see if we can extricate this thing out of here. Zoom you guys back out. Detail looks pretty good. Separately applied grab iron there on the top of the short hood. Let's get this spun around facing the right way. Looks like there might be a tiny bit of weathering on this as well. Looks like someone might have taken a a sooty weathering pigment or a wash of some kind and blackened the top here a tiny bit, which is fine. I don't hate that. When it comes to weathering, I am a, uh, I am of the opinion that less is more. Um, I don't think that anything should be on the rails that looks like a totally demolished and rusted hunk of scrap. But, um, yeah, a little rust here, a little faded paint. Um, on the case of the Dash 8 um, Santa Fe war bonnets that were around during the Burlington Northern Santa Fe merger, um, some of those are still around. And having not been painted, some of those are looking pretty haggard. Um, I always see those when I go down to Galveston because BNSF has a... Uh, a storage yard down there on the island which I don't know I don't know if those things are destined for rebuild for scrap for export or, or what I'd like to see a couple of them get donated to museums but that's not always what happens okay so we're just gonna look at this side for now here's our sunshade that is attached on this side B&O Railroad Number 7601. Looks like we have separately applied grabs on the front here. Let's zoom in. Definitely a little dusty. Yep, separately applied grabs. A little chunky, but I'm okay with that. Uh, what is going on with our front rails here? Probably just need a tiny little bit of persuasion. Um, builder's plate. I'm at full magnification here, guys, so you can see it, and you can read EMD, but I can't read the whole thing. We should be filming here in 4K. Our trucks, again, weathered with a little bit of greasy-looking grime. Cool. Molded in detail for our hand brake or emergency brake. Looks like we are missing something off the front here, maybe a snow plow. You see the, um, the holes here and here. That may be in the package here somewhere. Front pilot's okay. Looks like we might have ditch lights that are operable. 
blanking plates on the short hood. Headlights on the top of the cab, number boards, three chime horn. Yep, you can see some fibers, possibly some animal hair here. Or Perhaps the last owner was older. Um, handrails, fairly firm as far as uh, end scale handrails go. Pretty rigid, solid feeling. So we've got a warning plate back here. Not much in the way of individual labels and stuff. Sure, one of these under B and O here probably says SD40-2. Got our F for front up there. Um, this is the the, the trucks are, are basically detailed, not fantastic, but we do have it's like a separate airline applied on top for the brake cylinders. Let's move down a little bit here. Let's see part of this fuel tank. We've got our fuel gauge, fuel filler up top. I'm not sure what this is. Is is this the uh, an emergency shutdown button? We've got our bell under here. I just noticed that. Air tank. Details look pretty good, certainly for end scale. Even though it's no it's no scale train rivet counter, but. I paid a lot less for this than I would have scaled trains. Hood detail, pretty good, basic. Uh, I do not think that the little lift rings are separately applied. Um, exhaust is good, has good depth to it. The fans look like they're molded in. Got a separately applied grab iron here behind the radiator fans. No separately applied rear grabs, which is weird. I think that a few of my other ones have separately applied grabs back here on the back. Of course, we've got our number boards, our blanking plates. Rear pilot, there is a plow on this end. I'm wondering if this plow came off the, the front end as if someone was running this long hood forward. Got our rear pilot, our rear coupler, um, a Magnumatic or Accumate style coupler with a trip pin here. Looks like we have good mobility. Um, let's flip around to the other side. I'm not going to go crazy and disconnect, or not disconnect, remove all the foam or everything because it should be pretty much the same over here. Got our sight window here for our prime mover. Something written in the in the orange stripe up here, but I cannot make it out. Um, guys, if you know what that says, comment down below. Um, and there's our sunshade we'll need to fix. I'll do that off camera because I'm not good at that tedious work. Um, paint scheme and colors wise looks pretty good. The parting lines are are very clean. They're, they're not fuzzy. Let's go around to the other side. The emblem is very clean. Uh, mostly lays down in the crevices here between the doors. Um, this is not my first Chessy unit on the channel, or at least even an in scale. My first was one of the first generation of Bachmann F9 units with the metal truck gears. Very good runner, but a little noisy. Uh, it uh, It's not fantastic, but it definitely beats the Bachmann stuff that came directly after it for you know, 10 or 15 years. So um, this is my first freight unit and um, kind of goes back to my 
earliest history in model railroading. Um, some of you guys know the story. Back when I was probably around 10 or 11 years old, Dad bought me a lifelike set, and I think it was the Rail Blaster set, having gone back these days and done research. And basically what it was, it was a freight set which had a Chessy GP38 and caboose and a couple of freight cars and some other stuff. And he also got uh, extra track and it came, I don't remember if it came with or Dad bought us a little trellis bridge set to, to go with that. But um, yeah, the Chessy is where I started my model railroading career, I guess you could call it, hobby, passion. Even though Chessy was not something we would see down in our area, at least not that I ever recall being in the Dallas, uh, Texas area, mostly what we saw was Burlington Northern, MKT, and sometimes you would see Southern or Nor Norfolk Southern because it was around the time of the merger as well. So, I've talked enough about this guy. What do you say we get him over to the layout and find out what it does and what it doesn't do? I will see you guys over there. All right, guys, we've got the Chessy BLI unit on our track here. Let me go ahead and connect to our DCC++ EX. If it is turned on. It does help if you turn it on. Wait for that to boot up a moment. It also helps if I'm connected to the network. All right, we are connected. Let's turn on track power. Let's start with generic number three. Nothing on number three. Let's go with cab number 7601. All right, we've got headlights and number boards. Let's see if I can figure out what our prime mover startup is. F9. F9 it is. You hear the guy closing the doors on the long hood. Let's try our bell. F2 for our horn. That horn really has some distance on it. That's our notch up. Let's try to move it. A little stuttery.
may need to clean my track again. As you guys can see, this is kind of in a outdoor-ish. Well, not outdoor, but... Yeah, we can definitely stand to clean the track. Let's see if we can get her moving faster. Yeah, certainly not happy. Probably need to clean the contacts and everything else too. Let me see if I can get it back here. Dang, this thing has some momentum built into it. Oop. Wrong way, this way. Yep, a lot of my stuff tends to not like that one corner. Okay. Shut the sounds off. I'd say that's a reasonable test. It's still better than the Intermountain MKT unit that I bought brand new. Remember that soup sandwich? That one did get better after I ran it in, but I still think I need to clean it again because I have heard that the little, the little dimple wiper end of axle things tend to get crud in them, especially right after you break them in. So we'll clean that. Anyway, does our chessy unit run? Yes, it does, thankfully. And the decoder is not borked. So uh, I'm going to stop this one here <clears throat> if I do a video on cleaning I will bring you guys back but for now we're just gonna be happy with what we've got I'll probably just have to take the trucks apart and it could be the little contact strips as well because as you can see they're, they're small but I don't know, should work. I'll bet you it's just power pickup. And again, I need to clean my track and I never did really look at what these wheels looked like. There's the bottom of our speaker. The wheels don't look bad. So we probably just need to clean the wipers in the track. I am gonna clean the track though. All right, guys, I want to thank you for joining me on another Will It Run episode on Trains with Shane. This is our first Chessy unit that we featured on Will It Run. And I will see you guys on the next one. Until then, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.